Gonna give it all up and head for the hills My heart is broke and my body hurts And I live every day like I'm gonna die young That's the man that I'm trying to be They say when I'm gone Oh, what will they say when I'm gone If my father would say that I'm proud of you, son That's the man that I'm trying to become Oh, what will they say when I'm gone Oh, what they say when I'm gone. There's so many fond memories I have when I first started hunting with my dad. And in the beginning, it was just sitting with him in a deer stand. But I think one of the, one of the best memories I have as a kid was in my hometown, like many other towns and states across the country, we had a deer check-in station. And when, when you had a successful day where you were able to put a, a, a doe or a buck in the back of that truck, you, you drove it down to that check-in station that evening. And to see the line of pickup trucks down there, to see all your buddies and, and even people you didn't know, to strike up conversations and share stories of, of your day and, and to see how successful people were, it was truly my favorite part of the day. It was, I enjoyed it more than the hunt itself. I never heard mention of what, an, what a deer scored. As a matter of fact, I, I didn't know what an, an antler score was back then. And I'm not knocking antler score or, or those that practice you know, trophy hunting. All I'm saying is that we do not measure our success by that and I think a good way to look at it would be if you fast forward 30 years from now, what will you remember more about that particular hunt or moment? Will it be what that animal scored or will it be the overall memory of that hunt and who it was with? things turn around for us because we haven't done squat so far. He was expecting, but yeah, I, it, I was thinking right there, but then they said the door was on that side. I... I've been to Steve's place for the past three years, and what started this obsession with Kentucky was putting my tagger on my very first velvet whitetail. There's a deer right there. What is it? Oh, is that a big that's that velvet box with that velvet tag?
And that's where he's going to be walking if he's walking. If, if you hang the set tomorrow, Justin, come off the, oh, you're basically facing up this way. You know what I mean? Yep. And then if they're all coming down that way. Yep. You may have to go above that, which if you'll be high, we'll figure it out. You know, there was a 15 deer in here that night. Nobody I love hunting with Steve out. because to me personally, he understands deer nobody more than most do. There. It's no secret looking back that Steve has been there from the very beginning helping us out in our early stages of producing television. Last year was probably our best year in Kentucky. We were able to watch one of our graduates get their very first velvet whitetail, as well as a very good friend of ours shoot their first deer in over 10 years. And after having a tougher year, I was able to go back there late season and finally get my shot at a mature whitetail. This is night one in Kentucky. I've been hunting with Steve for three years now. I just, I love hunting Kentucky. Something about it. He's just got beautiful ground. He always tries hard for me, so. So, I just spotted a big eight pointer up there. And I lost him, he was going left to right. So it gets real thick in the middle here and opens up. So either he's cut down towards us or he walked over the hill. So there he was nice. I hope he comes down here. Hmm? I got the waterproof Crocs on. I can get them. Yeah. Waterproof Crocs, you say? Yeah, I got the waterproof Crocs on. I just bought them at Walmart on the rollback. Head on this side. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. We'll be fine. I said when we leave here, we'll be walking the camp. This segment is brought to you by Film the Hunt. Look for our on-site courses for tons of opportunity in learning outdoor video production at filmthehunt.com.
page, that's what I'm saying. Just change the name. Oh. <laughs> what did you pack? Minimal clothes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you laugh. You put those gloves on and pull this over the top. Oh, no. I Believe me, I have that shirt. I get it. You get it? I do. You want to text a call somebody out there? I might. She seems like bad luck. Shoot him, but 
Maybe he'll, sw he'll swing back around and we'll get a better look. Perfect, perfect, perfect day for November. Just 32 degrees, light frost, light breeze, sun rising. I mean, it's uh, ideal conditions for these bucks to be on their feet. we got a nice little vantage point, Zach and I, and we're going to get after it. Nick first lined up this trip to Kentucky, I never once thought about how big of a buck I may have the opportunity to shoot. It was always about getting a chance to hunt a state that I had never hunted before, getting a chance to meet people that I had never met before. It was about a new experience and a chance to enjoy it with good friends. And in the end, if I could do it all over again, I wouldn't change a single thing and I'm proud to go home with the whitetail I was lucky enough to harvest. Scraping right at this tree right here? You can't see him. Oh, yeah, trail. I see him both. <laughs> That's awesome. It's always broken. Mostly, I don't know why. <laughs> man, uh, man it's, oh, good coffee. <laughs> I'm out of water. I'm trying to pack things in here. Nick, come in here so we can make fun of you a little bit. <laughs> Justin, come in here so we can make fun of you a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> 